All right, hi guys. So let's start the next episode of five MCQs in five minutes, through which we are actually revising five important topics for examination like NEET, PG, FMG, and INICT. This series is equally beneficial for all these aspirants who are writing examinations. The very first question that we having for today is which of the following agent is preferred for closure of ductus arteriosus in a baby with a patent ductus arteriosus? You see, ductus arteriosus is normally present in the intrauterine life. It is normally present in the intrauterine life, but usually in a normal person at birth. Normally at birth it closes. Normally at birth it is actually going to close down. But if ductus arteriosus remain open. then we are going to call it as a condition known as your patent ductus arteriosus this patency in the intrauterine life is mainly due to prostaglandin so if it is a continued if there is a continuous supply of prostaglandin then definitely the patient will have patent ductus arteriosus so what we are going to do we are going to cut down the supply and for that we will be using cox inhibitor cox inhibitor we can use drugs like your indomethacin ibuprofen we can utilize mefenamic acid is also one of the cox inhibitor but we, this is not the preferred one we examined is asking which is the preferred one mefenamic acid currently is also remember is associated with your dress syndrome which i am pretty sure all of you guys are recently uh, aware drug reaction that is associated with eosinophilia and systemic uh, side effect and misoprostol is uh, the they are the analog of the pg even only they can be you know utilized in a patient with the peptic ulcer disease misoprostol can also be utilized you know uh, for the treatment of uh, uh, for the treatment of uh, bleeding uh, for the treatment of the uterine bleeding for controlling the uterine bleeding also we can also utilize and also it can be utilized for mtp for medical termination pregnancy also we can utilize paracetamol is a cox inhibitor that can be utilized for the pain management or for the fever right indomethacin is something that we can utilize because we are going to cut down the supply of the prostaglandin which of the following is preferred agent for the treatment of digoxin induced ventricular arrhythmia if they are asking digoxin induced ventricular arrhythmia the preferred agent that we are having is lidocaine class 1 b antiarrhythmic drug 1 b antiarrhythmic drug they always used to say that i am so brave that they all like to phone me they all like to phone me that is going to be your lidocaine tocainite lidocaine tocainite phone is phenytoin and anti epileptic drug having arrhythmic property and maxiltine maxiltine right they i am so brave b for brave that they all like to phone me they are the class 1 b antiarrhythmic drug no can i use atropine yes atropine is also that that can be utilized but preferred one is going to be your uh, lidocaine amiodarone is also something that can be utilized but again remember the first line drug is always going to be lidocaine digitoxin is not going to be utilized for the treatment of digoxin induced ventricular arrhythmia they are highly toxic that is we are clinically not using as a matter of fact but if the examiner is going to ask you digoxin induced severe toxicity and you know, where the heart rate is going beyond let's say 35 40 like that then in that case scenario we will be using antidote known as your dg bind remember the uh, uh, antidote ka table that i gave you in the previous you know, uh, previous episode isotope of iodine used in the treatment of thyroid disorder so thyroid disorder ke management ke liye we will be using 131 131 that actually emits the beta ray and remember they are going to be contra indicated in young population and also in the pregnancy young and pregnancy we will not be giving young matlab less than 35 year or pregnant females may be also we are not going to give they will be emitting beta ray and any patient those who are going to receive radioactive iodine remember they will be causing irreversible damage they will be causing irreversible damage to the thyroid gland therefore life long thyroid supplement will be required iodine 131 remember guys it is mainly utilized for the diagnostic purposes they will be mainly utilized for the diagnostic purposes theek okay? hai which of the following agent is used in anaphylactic shock i think everyone is aware anaphylactic shock in example of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction which is actually ige mediated and for all of them we will be using adrenaline and in fact in 2020 to 2021 this is june 2021 in 2022 what they did they gave a history of a patient was given penicillin now he is presenting fall in the blood pressure and they, these are the other features so they gave all the feature of anaphylactic shock breathing difficulty and all and then they said which of the following drug will be utilized so same question they just put it in different language right adrenaline so one is to 1000 intramuscular root pay uh, intramuscular root say will be giving they are the preferred agent for a patient with the anaphylactic shock verapamil happens to be the drug of choice in a patient with supraventricular tachycardia phenylephrine for the management of postural hypotension for the management of the postural hypotension we can utilize and they are alpha 1 agonist phenylephrine kya hote hain they are the alpha 1 agonist and atropine is used as the antidote for 
organophosphate and carbamate poisoning. Do remember that uh, they are also the drug of choice in a patient with the sinus bradycardia. Sinus bradycardia, they are also the drug of choice in a patient with the heart block. AV block, any type of AV block, may, we can utilize atropine as a drug of choice. Correct answer for this question is due to adrenaline 1 to 1000 intramuscular root or it means 0.5 ml will be injected. Next question is about a patient presented with a history of easy fatigability and weakness of the limb, especially in the evening. So this question has been asked like n number of times once again 2022 need pg nict fmg they asked this one then again 2021 maybe this question was already there this symptom were improved upon adrophonium do you know which type of drug is adrophonium they are the reversible acetylcholine esterase inhibitor that is actually going to increase the level of acetylcholine so after adrophonium if anything that improves then possibly this is a case of your myasthenia gravis after adrophonium the level of acetylcholine is increasing and if it is a case of uh, if it is a case of you know cholinergic crisis in cholinergic crisis the symptom actually will worsen out the symptom will actually worsen out alzheimer disease has nothing to do with your uh, you know this uh, adrophonium because this adrophonium injection and we are going to monitor the symptom we call them as a tensilon test so tensilon test is not done in a patient with alzheimer disease alzheimer disease may tensilon test ka koi role nahi hai wilson disease again due to uh, you know degeneration of the uh, neuron possibility to copper deposition correct answer for this question is going to be your myasthenia gravis that is actually improving after the adrophonium intake right so this was five question uh, in five minutes for all of you guys and sometime ek, ek do minute upar niche ho i hope you guys will be able to adjust with it because we are discussing definitely all the high yield topics these are some of my social media handle that you can utilize to stay connected with me and please do not forget to like share and subscribe i'll see you in the next session thank you very much